Hi, I'm Jean-François Manzoni. I'm the Nestlé Professor of Leadership and Organizational Development at IMD, where I'm also the President. The last few weeks have been particularly interesting for leaders, and looking back on these last few weeks, I have identified four insights on leading in and through a crisis that I hope might be of interest to you. The first of these four insights was the need to maintain a very engaged and aligned leadership team. The second insight focused on the importance of communicating with the troops in a way that helps them to remain calm, productively focused and energized. Today, we are going to develop the third insight, the need to allocate your time and attention between two competing, but ultimately very complementary priorities, short-term survival and longer-term success, or playing defense and playing offense. This third insight turned out to be pretty rich, so we decided to split it up into two parts that you will be able to watch consecutively or with a break in between as you prefer. The first step in this balancing process is actually identifying that what is happening is not just a bleep or a temporary annoyance, but it is or it has a strong potential to become a crisis. This sounds obvious and trivial, but it's not. In the case of this COVID-19 crisis, experience shows that a number of governments failed to grasp the severity of the crisis for some time, and in some cases, a problematically long time that ended up being quite costly for them. Recognizing a crisis from a bleep requires the leadership team to be informed about problems and potential problems, so there's an issue of access to information. It then requires the leadership team to be able to sense what is really potentially important given the organization's business model, stakeholder situation, and more generally, its specific context. This step requires judgment and foresight on the part of the leadership team. It probably also requires the leadership team to be willing and able to allocate enough time to emerging issues. Too many leadership teams are so focused on managing today that they have limited time and attention left for processing the unusual. In our case, we identified early that the coronavirus, as it was initially referred to, could affect international mobility and hence become a crisis for us. So we immediately appointed a special task force to A, stay on top of this development and, and B, advise the leadership team on possible consequences and potential necessary actions. We also rapidly identified four streams of discussion. First was ensuring the health of our various constituencies, our staff, of course, as well as executives attending our programs and guests visiting us in Lausanne or in Singapore. Our CFO, who oversees the facilities team, was in the lead on this front. The second stream was focused on managing the impact on our programs because they generate 95% of our revenues. From mid-March onward, we started receiving requests to postpone and sometimes even cancel programs. So quite a few decisions needed to be made quickly, and then many actions needed to be engaged immediately as a result of these decisions. For example, as we started postponing programs to Q3 and Q4, we also needed to find ways to increase capacity during these periods. On these matters, our chief client officer and his various teams were in the lead position and kept the leadership team informed, initially every two, three days, then on a daily basis, and now on a weekly basis. The third stream of discussions was what we called playing defense, which involved two fronts. The first front focused on managing cash in and cash out and lining up several layers of financing. Again, our CFO was in the lead for these questions. The second front involved reducing our running costs and particularly reducing salaries as they represent the majority of our expenses. 
We did consider using the crisis to accelerate some of these decisions that you know, you know you should make and you want to make, but you feel that they're going to be very unpopular in the absence of a clear sense of urgency. Well, the crisis was generating a clear sense of urgency that we could use maybe to legitimate these decisions. For a number of reasons, we chose not to do so then. This is not to say that it wasn't a reasonable course of action for other organizations and maybe for yours. We just decided that for us at that time, it wasn't the way to go. Rather than eliminating 25% of the people, we felt it would be better, both short term and longer term, to reduce the cost of each job by 25% on average. So we immediately applied for governmental support and we also warned our staff, of course, that if we could not get governmental support, we would proceed with voluntary salary reductions. To be clear, discussions also included other scenarios, including very negative ones. What will we do if, in a crisis, you want to be ready for the worst case? But while the worst is possible and you need to be able to withstand it, it is not yet certain. Furthermore, we know that this crisis will pass. How long that will take is unclear, but it will pass. And when it does, will you come out of this crisis a stronger organization, fit for the post-crisis world, or will you survive it but exit the crisis pretty depleted? This question led us to create a fourth stream of discussions, which I develop in the second part of this video.